Okay, here we are, 7.2b. Whoops, that's not an eraser. There we go. And we're in example four, and we have one tenth x squared minus one fifth x equals negative one half. All right, so let's go ahead and get rid of these fractions. So the best way to get rid of these fractions is to multiply each term here by the common denominator, okay? So what is the smallest number that goes into, or that each of these numbers can go into? In this case, it's 10. 10 goes into 10 once, 5 goes into it twice, 2 goes into it 5 times. So we're going to multiply the entire thing by 10. So that gives me an x squared, because this becomes 10 over 10. This becomes 10 over 5 when we multiply here, so that's a 2. And then this 10 times negative 1 is a negative 5. Okay, so then we rewrite it. Oops, plus 5 equals 0. That's a lot easier to work with than that. So let's keep moving here. And again, I'm going to write out the quadratic formula. Okay. And I do like to put my A, my B, and my C up here. It's just a reminder um, so that I don't make any silly mistakes. So my negative B plus or minus square root of b squared minus 4 times a times c all over 2 times 1. Okay, nothing really scary there, but one of the things that you're going to find here, up until this point, everything under the radical sign, whenever we've solved it, it's been... Um, a real number. We've taken, like on the last one, it was a square root of 8. And the one before that was, let's see, example 2. It was the square root of 40. And the one before that was the square root of 49. This one is going to be different. Watch what we get. x equals, that's a positive 2, plus or minus the square root. Of 4 minus 20. Now you can look at that right away and see that 4 minus 20 is going to give me a negative number. Whenever that number in the radical is a negative, that tells me I'm going to get a complex number. I'm going to get an imaginary number as part of this. So first thing that I would do with this is take out that i. Okay, now what? Well, we can look at that 16 and take the square root of 16. And that's 4, so we have a 4i there, and that's all over 2. And then I'm going to pull out the 2 in the top. So notice what I did here. I took out a 2 from here, but I still have a 1 here. So 2 times 2, that gives me this 2 back. 2 times 2i gives me my 4i back. Make sure you have a placeholder there. You put a 1 there. Okay, now these cancel, and I'm left with 1 plus 2i and 1 minus 2i for an answer. Okay, so in order to do this, we have to have it in this form. We, there's no exceptions to that. So what we're going to do is we're going to do the FOIL method for that. And we end up with 4x squared minus 8x plus 3 equals negative 4. So we're almost there. We have to add 4 to both sides. So 4x squared minus 8x plus 7 equals 0. Okay, one of the things 
I want to mention, when we are doing completing the square in 7.1, remember I told you that there could not be a number here. We had to have that number be gone. Just a 1 in front of here is all we could have. So we divided each of these by 4 in order to do the completing the square. Because if we divided this by 4, then that cancels. And we have a 1 then in front. Doing the quadratic formula, though, we don't have to have that number to be uh, 1. We can have it be whatever we want. So sometimes that makes the quadratic formula um, easier because you don't have to worry about that. So let's write that there. And again, A, B, C, and we get X equals negative, negative 8 plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over, oops, not that far all over, all over 2 times 4. All right, so let's slide this up, keep going. So our x equals 8 plus or minus square root of 64 minus 4 times 4 is 16 times 7 is 112 over 8. So x equals 8 plus or minus 64 minus 112 is negative 48 all over 8. We can factor... Um, some things out of here, possibly. So let's give it a shot and see what we can do. Is there a way we can reduce the square root of 48, though? The square root of 48, let's see, we've got a 4 and a 12. We've got an 8 and a 6. So we could put a 4 and a 12, an 8 and a 6. Um... What else do we have here? A 16 and a 3. Ooh, I like the 16. I can take the square root of that. I can also take the square root of 4, but that's not as big of a number as the 16 is, so I'm going to use the 16. So 16 times 3 gives me 48. Square root of 16 is 4 with the 3 left. Okay, the problem is I still have a negative in there, don't I? That negative... So I'm going to take the negative out, turn it into an I, and get that. So this is the same as the square root of negative 48, just reduced. So 8 plus or minus 4I square root of 3 over 8. And if you notice here, I've got an 8 here and a 4. I can factor a 4 out of that whole thing. So I'm going to do that, and I've got a 2 plus or minus i square root of 3 over, that doesn't look like an 8, over 8. Okay, let's see if we can get this junk out of the way. And I can cancel that and get a 2, and that can get a 1, because 4 over 8 is the same as 1 half. So I have 2 plus or minus i square root of 3 over Two. Now remember, you cannot cancel this 2 and this 2. This plus or minus sign locks this to this. These cannot be separated. Okay? So if it was multiplied, you could. But since it's added, you can't. So this ends up being our answer. We can't reduce it any more than that. All right. So look at 27, or example 6, top of page 590, 27t cubed. Minus 8 equals 0. Now, some people would look at this and do this. And then take the cubed root of both sides to get rid of that cubed root. But the problem we run into is this says that we're going to have three answers. If we do it the other way, we're only going to get one answer. So if you were to try that... You'd find out you'd get one answer, so you'd be missing two of the answers. So you don't want to do that. 
you want to do the uh, difference of two cubes. So if you remember way, way, way back, we had the difference of two cubes, and we had, uh, first of all, we rewrote this, let me do that first, as 3t cubed, because 27, if you take 3 times 3 is 9, times 3 is 27, and then 2 cubed equals 0. Now, I like doing that because it gets the cubes here, and then we can do what we need to from um, past assignment about the difference between two cubes. So the first of all is we take our first term and we subtract our last term. So remember it was a minus b. And then this one here was a squared plus a b plus b squared. Now this is from page 75. That's where that formula came from. So all I have to do then is take my A and, and put it here, minus my B, which is a 2, put it there. Now, I need to square my A. So if I take 3T and square it, I get 9T squared. If I multiply my A and my B, my 3T and my 2, I get 6T. And if I square my second term, my 2 there, I get a 4. And that equals 0. Okay, so I set it equal to 0, just like I had up there. So what I did is I just rewrote that whole um, thing there. And um, all I'm going to really worry about is this part here. I do have to say that 3t minus 2 equals 0. So I have to set them both equal to 0 so I can find out what t has to be in order to make it 0. So when I multiply it, I get 0. So I find out that t is 2 thirds for this part right there. So that's one of my answers is 2 thirds. Now I have to find my other two answers. And notice this is a squared, so it tells me there's two answers. When I do negative b plus or minus the square root, okay, so let's look at this. Negative b, negative 6 plus or minus the square root of 6 squared minus 4 times 9 times 4 all over 2 times 9. Now let's go ahead and solve this. So that's my other, oops, that's what my other t is going to be. So negative 6 plus or minus 36 minus 144. That's going to give me a negative number under there. So that already tells me I'm going to have an imaginary number for my other two answers. So that's what that does. It tells me what kind of an answer I'm going to get. So 36 minus 144 is negative 108, and that is over 18. So if I look at 108, I know that 36 times 3 is 108. I can take the square root of 36 and get 6. So 6 square root of 3 is the, square, is the same as the square root of 108, but I've got this minus sign in there. So let's go ahead and write this. Okay, so I'm going to pull that minus sign out of there and put an I, and then my 3 becomes positive over 18. Okay, so, oops. Not too bad yet. And now I'm going to factor out. Um, sixes here. So let's take out a six. I'm left with negative one plus or minus that six goes away. Six over 18 is one third. 
So now we have negative 1 plus or minus i square root of 3 over 3 for an answer. So I have negative 1 plus i square root of 3 over 3. And I have negative 1 minus i square root of 3 over 3. And I also have way up here my two-thirds. So that's my third answer that I have to have because the equation was uh, had to do with cubes. Okay, so that takes us all the way up to applications, which is example 7 and example 8. And let's just kind of look real quickly at those rather than solve them all, at least get you started. So we threw down this object has an initial velocity of 20 feet per second, the distance s of t in feet, so s of t in feet, it travels in t seconds, is given by the function s of t equals 20 t plus 16 t squared. So there's the formula that they're giving you to solve this. So that's all we're doing. Um, so how long does it take the object to fall 40 feet? So what we're looking at is time. And that time depends on um, the speed, or the, I'm sorry, the distance. This is um, the distance in feet. Because S of T speed, times time, that gives you distance. Distance equals RT, rate times time. So speed times time gives you the, uh, the distance. And what does it say? How long does it take the object to fall 40 feet? So they're gonna put a 40 feet in here for our distance. And then we're gonna rewrite this as 16T squared plus 20 t minus 40 equals 0. So there you go. One of the things I would do before you put it in quadratic formula is I would factor out what you can prior to. It just makes it easier. So let's, let's factor a 4 out of here. So if I factor a 4 out, Okay, so really when that 4 is factored out, it pretty much goes away. And then you can use a quadratic formula with this being A, B, and C. And then when you get done, you end up with a crazy number like this. Okay, so when you end up with that, that doesn't help you. I don't understand what this is, you know, how long that is. So what you end up doing is plugging the numbers into your calculator and solving. So it'd be like negative 5. If you took the square root of, um, except this is a plus or minus, if you took the square root of 185, you'd get 13.6, and that's over 8. Then you'd add those together, divide by 8. You've also got negative 5 minus 13.6 divided by 8. But problem with that is when you subtract these two, you get a negative number, and you can't have a negative time. So you know this number does not, does not work. So it's going to have to be the one that's added, and then you end up with 1.08 seconds when you add negative 5 to this and divide it by 8. So that's pretty much it when it comes to example 7. Um, example 8 is pretty much the same thing, and you just set it up according to how they say and use the quadratic formula to find the answer to that. And again, you'll have the plus or the minus, and this time both of them work. So that is 7.2.